It seems like brakes on BMX bikes are finally becoming popular again with more and more people putting them onto their bikes. So in this week's Tuesday tip, I'm gonna be going over everything that you need to put a brake on your BMX bike, specifically with a straight cable setup. I'll be doing another video going over a gyro setup and the different cables needed for that. But in this one, let's talk about straight cables starting from the front and work our way to the back. The first thing we need is obviously a brake lever. In my personal experience, these are all about personal preference. Brake levers can feel completely different the way that they're made. There's brake levers for one finger, two fingers, and even three fingers if you can fit it on there. Your brake lever and the shape of it can also have an effect on the leverage that you get when pulling your brakes. So pick something that is comfortable for you, that feels like you can get enough leverage with it. And if you're first putting brakes on your bike for the first time ever, this isn't something that is extremely crucial. I would just get something that looks like it might be comfortable and move on from there. After that, we're obviously gonna need a cable as well. If you're getting a straight cable, you're gonna want a straight cable. So with that, the cable goes all the way down here and you can see we actually have something else here. It's a Velcro cable strap that just keeps it in place on the bars. That's something small, but you might end up needing it or something to take its place. Then we move down here a little bit. You can see this strap of tape right here. This just keeps the cable in place as well. Some frames have cable guides up here. This one does not. So we got some tape on here. We also got a string holding it in place here just because this was a brand new cable and it just kept its shape and I needed it to stay in place. But moving way back here, let's give you guys a little bit better look at some of the small pieces and parts that are crucial to brakes that you might not know about. Okay, so following the brake cable back on the bike leads us to this cable guide that is in the frame. You're absolutely going to need a cable guide right here because you're gonna need a barrel adjuster to go into it to give you some adjustment and to give your cable a stopping point. So your cable is gonna go into here. So you're gonna need that barrel adjuster. You're gonna need that cable guide. And if you have a straight cable, you're going to need some sort of straddle cable setup. This piece right here is called a cable hanger. And there's several different styles of straddle cable setups, but the one on this bike that we'll talk about first is a kind that a cable loops through, which is the straddle cable. And this is literally just a really short piece of brake cable with an end on it on one side. And then oftentimes you'll have something else over here, which we'll talk about in just a second. But then up here we have our cable hanger, which the cable loops through. There's different styles of how these are connected and how the original brake cable itself from the front of the bike connects to the cable hanger. But this one right here screws in with some screws. Some of them use bolts and other things like that but you're going to need some sort of straddle cable, cable hanger setup. Fly and other companies make some proprietary setups that come with everything you need and don't have cables. They have a more direct route from the cable hanger itself to the brake arm, which can be good, but at the very least, you're gonna need to get something to hang a cable here and connect your brake cable to your brake arms. I understand that so far this might seem a little overwhelming and feel like there's a lot going on, a lot of different pieces and parts that are necessary, but I just wanted to cover this stuff in depth so you guys get an understanding of what all you need as well as some of the utility behind it. So moving forward, I feel like I should address this little zip tie that you guys can see here. I do have a video about this, but this is simply just to give a better and more direct pull for our straddle cable. But moving backwards, let's talk about how these pieces connect because sometimes brakes are different. As you can see here, there's a bolt going through this side of the brake arm. That means that we don't need a NARP for this side. Typically, with a straddle cable setup like this and modern brakes, you're going to need something to go into this side of the brake arm because it's not going to have a bolt there. So you're going to want some sort of NARP and usually brake cables come with this, but if not, get some NARPs anyways because they're always handy to have around just in case you need them. These brakes don't need that NARP, but let's move on from there and just talk about the brakes in general. You're gonna need brakes. There's so many different choices out there when it comes to brakes. These are actually the first brakes that I've ever had ever. These came on the first complete bike that I ever had and they're still working fine and they still pull good and they still feel good. So that just goes to show that what you choose isn't going to dictate how your brakes feel, it's how you set them up. So don't get caught up in the choosing process or anything like that. Pick something that seems to have a good reputation as well as comes from a company that you support. And at that, buy it from your local bike shop. From there, we've got the brakes. They should come with everything that we need, including the springs and the caps that go with them, as well as our frame should come with the brake mounts that these brake arms go over. If they don't, 
you're gonna need to get some brake mounts. The brake mounts can usually be bought through the company that makes the frame that you have. If you don't have brake mounts or that cable guide we talked about earlier, you can't find these things on the website of the company that makes your frame, reach out to them, send them an email, give them a call, let them know which frame you have and that you need brake mounts or a cable guide for it. And they should be able to get you sorted out for fairly cheap because those are pretty inexpensive parts. But moving on from there, we've talked about everything leading up until this point and everything that we've talked about has been absolutely necessary in getting a brake set up running. But let's talk about the last thing that is fairly important to making your brakes work, and that is the brake pads. There's a lot of different styles and compounds for brake pads that are out there. I personally run clear brake pads just because I love the way that they make my brakes work, and there's a lot of tricks that I do that they just need to be there at that moment in time, and I can't have them slipping, and clear pads have done that for me. So do your research, figure out which pads are going to work with your setup. Conventionally, clear brake pads are gonna be the loudest, but also stick the best, depending upon which surface you have on your rim. There's also black and other colors of brake pads that simply indicate that there's a different compound used for the brake pad. Like I said, do your research, figure out which ones that you need, and if you want me to make a specific video about it, let me know in the comments down below and I will definitely do that. But then when it comes to how the brake pads are connected, there's also different styles here. So this style of brake pad has a stud that comes out of the pad itself, and then another that goes on there and there's washers in here. Most all brake pads have the washers here, but some of them have a bolt that screws into the pad so you don't have this piece sticking out. That's the style I have on the bike I ride on a daily basis. As you're seeing, this is the style with the stud that the nut screws onto. But let's move back a little bit further and talk about something that you might not think has an effect on the feel of your brakes and it absolutely does. And that is the finish of your rear rim. This rim from Alienation, for instance, actually has a coating on it that makes your brakes work better, which is why I absolutely love it and swear by it. Then there's polished, chrome, and painted rims that all work together with the different compounds and colors of brake pads to make your brakes feel completely different based on your personal preference. So with that, all of these things work together to make your brake setup work. And let's just run from the top to the bottom real quick. You need a lever, a cable, you need some sort of tie strap or something to connect it to the bars and the frame to just keep it from flopping around if you want it. Then you're gonna need some barrel adjusters as well as a cable guide, a straddle cable, cable hanger set up with the straddle cable itself, some brake arms, some NARPs, and some brake pads. All of those things are what you need to make your brake setup work, and I hope that you guys found this video useful. And if you did, I actually have an entire playlist showing you everything from how to install your new brakes to adjust your spring tension and a whole bunch of other tips and tricks on everything in between. If you guys are new here or you haven't yet, consider hitting the subscribe button down below so hopefully we can see you tomorrow for another video. I wanna thank you guys all for being here and watching. And get out there and do some brake tricks. Goodbye.